Hmm, where are the rare earth elements? Maybe here? Nope. It's just a boring piece of granite. <gasps> Wait, what is it? It's the Swedish mayonnaise, which that my Swedish chief will always eat. Exactly, I'll go there and look for rare earth elements and eat terbium. It's not for no reason that we decided to visit Sweden. We went there to visit a small Swedish village called Eterby, after which four elements were named. Those four elements are Eterbium, Erbium, Terbium and Eterbium. The scientific history of this village began in the end of 19th century, when Lieutenant Carl Arrhenius found an unidentified black mineral in a quartz mine. The nature itself contributed to this discovery, because during the last ice age, millions of tons of ice washed away a lot of excess impurities from the rocks of the Swedish isles, and making it easily accessible. Seven years after Arrhenius' discovery, a Finnish chemist, Johan Gadolin, found a new and unknown black zen element in such a black piece of rock. Later on, the same black rock was named Gadolinite, and more than 100 years later, other chemists extracted seven more rare earth minerals from Eterium. Four of those metals were named after the village of Eterby. Nowadays Eterby is not an extraordinary village which mainly is inhabited by rich Swedes. A regular tourist will never guess that this village is a birthplace of many elements in the periodic table. There is no such other place like this in the whole world, where so many rare earth elements were discovered. Now the mine grass over and hasn't been used for over 19 years. Only this sign, put up here in 1989, tells about this mine's history. To find Eterbium in the mine, I have brought this dosimeter. It will show me the right way. The radiation exposure is increasing as we are walking. Here they are, the rare earth elements. The black gadolinite contained in this rock, besides rare earth elements, also contains thorium, which is why this huge piece of rock emits radiation. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring a pickaxe to mine some gadolinite. However, Pure Eterbium Oxide can be extracted from this mineral, and in turn, pure metallic Eterbium can be also extracted from Eterbium Oxide. As I mentioned in my previous videos, the rare earth metals are frequently found together in minerals, because of their similar chemical properties. By the way, scientists managed to extract pure Eterbium and separate it from other lanternines only in 1955. However, in contrast to its fellow rare earth metals, Eterbium has a relatively low density, although it has a high atomic mass. It's all because of the abnormally large distance between atoms in the crystalline form, just like in case with europium. From a chemical point of view, this metal is quite active, it doesn't dissolve well in hot water, whereas it reacts much more actively with hydrochloric acid. During the first seconds, it forms very unstable Eterbium 2 chloride. Have you seen this yellow color? This is Eterbium 2 chloride, which immediately oxidizes and turns into colorless free valent chloride. How could I ever forget about a good old grinding wheel? However, it was in for an unpleasant surprise, because Eterbium doesn't burn well when grinded. Fine Eterbium powder, however, beautifully burns green in the air. Most of these metals compounds are added to optical glass, which in turn is used to make powerful solid-state lasers. Another interesting property of Eterbium is that its electrical conductivity changes as the pressure increases, in particular when reaching more than 1600 atmospheres. This property of this metal was used for detecting shock waves during nuclear weapons testing and it is still used to detect seismic waves earthquakes generate. Just like other lanthanides, Eterbium doesn't have too many practical applications. 
let's say, in comparison to other metals. The origin of its name Fro, which is derived from the name of a Swedish village, three more elements are named after, makes the history of this element quite unique and interesting. By the way, besides terbium, iterbium, iterium and erbium, which are found in that very black rock, there are also such metals as holmium, lutetium and gadolinium. If you ever visit Sweden, don't forget to visit this unique place and pay tribute to those scientists. Thanks to the contributions of whom, we now have 7 new elements. If you would like to support the continuous production of science videos like this one, please support channel on Patreon, link in the video description. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel to see many more new and interesting 